document you need to produce is called the rationale. This is basically where you explain all of your project management decisions. So let's start with ordering of the tasks. Why have we ordered it in this way? Uh, so we're just going to explain that we've used the software development lifecycle approach, the incremental approach. So we've started off with planning analysis and we've explained that we've included upgrading infrastructure, um, what that is, and creating the test plan. Then we've gone on to the module development. So we've developed each of the modules, just a bit about what each of the modules does and the purpose of it. It's the backend database, storing data, user interface, so people can access our system. Information feed is live financial information updates. Investments and savings is the basically the company's products. Data analytics, and then the communications to allow the employees to communicate with the customers. Then we did testing. Okay, so we did the unit testing first, then we do the integration testing, then we do the fixing and regression testing for major faults, and while we're doing that, we can do the fixing and regression testing for minor faults. So we've done that last, letting the users end users test the system. So remember that we had to deploy all the modules first, and then we could do that. So it might it, it might be an idea to do it that way around. The point of your rationale is just to justify that, where you've put that, why you've done it that way. Uh, deployment and support, we've got deploying modules and user training. As you can see from the Gantt chart, it doesn't actually flow like that. It's incremental. It's also going back to stuff we've done before. So we do deployment and then we're going back to testing again. Okay, so that's fine. It's iterative. That's absolutely fine to do it that way. Again, just use your, your rationale to explain that. The other thing you need to talk about is resource allocation. Why have you assigned these people to these tasks? You've got to base this on the information you are given in the set task brief. Okay, so as an example, we've got Sarah. We've assigned a module three, module five, fixing and regression testing for major faults and creating a test plan. Okay, why? Because um, she's the most experienced developer. So it's ideal for her to complete the complex and critical tasks like the live financial feed and the data analytics. Both those must be robust and secure and in real time. So her background in high risk and large scale financial systems, which it says in her little bio, uh, is directly aligns with the client needs. She's got leadership and testing experience, makes a good fit for testing and regression testing, uh, especially for major faults where precision is key. Okay, so this is something you need experience on. We've got Gina, back in database. Well, she's the database person, isn't she? So um, let's talk about that, why we've signed that. Terry, we've given module two, module six. He's doing integration testing. He's also doing user acceptance test testing and training. Okay, so talk a bit about what his skills are. He's also got experience in game development. Okay, so he's good at user interfaces. So that, that's, his, that's his background, so we've put him on that. Excellent communication skills, making him ideal for user training and talking with non-technical stakeholders, so uh, employees. We've got Arhad. He's doing all of those things. Uh, he's the least experienced because uh, we want to allow him to develop skills. So we're going to give him the lower risk components. Uh, he might be guided by Sarah or Gina, so we might want to go back and put Sarah in to our plan. So where we've got our had on task, we might also want to assign Sarah to that, but bearing in mind that that will increase our project costs. Um, so we're not actually going to put that in at the moment. Well, so we've got unit testing, deployments, ideal learning opportunities that contribute real value with low risk. Uh, strong communication skills. So he'll be good for the minor fault resolution because uh, then he can go back to the developer and he can discuss what he's found. And then, of course, we've got Marius. The only job he can really do is upgrade the infrastructure. Uh, if you're doing the physical server, he can do that as well, but we're not in this solution. So we'll just talk about why he's doing that because um, basically that's his experience. Then we need to talk about potential risks. What are the risks in this project? Um, well, it's quite a few. Uh, integration failures between modules. Okay, so they might not integrate properly. So that's going to have a knock on effect on our time because we have to then go back and recode things. Infrastructure upgrade issues. Maybe Marius has trouble upgrading the infrastructure, whatever problems that might be. But he's involved really early on in the project. So he's got time to troubleshoot um, and we can delay things slightly if we need to. 
performance bottlenecks in live information feeds. This is going to rely a lot on um, an API, probably an external API. Um, so Sarah is in charge of doing that. Uh, Sarah's also experiencing distributed systems and developing those sorts of things anyway, so she might want to do stress testing uh, feed under load. Uh, that's not actually included in the project, so we don't need to worry about that. We can just put that in and say this is a possible thing that could happen and this is how we would mitigate that. Security vulnerabilities, again, not built into the project itself, but it's something we can add on just to say, yes, we're aware that it needs to be secure. We need to think about things like data encryption, access control, and all that sort of stuff. So that would need to be built into the project at some point. Human resource risks, so human risks. Um, Over-reliance on Sarah for the critical modules. If Sarah becomes unavailable, okay, so she suddenly goes off sick, then we've got a problem because key components like the data analytics and live feed might be delayed because she's the only person who can actually do that. Uh, it might be beneficial to assign junior software developers to assist Sarah so they can learn alongside her. So if she does have to take a day off, maybe they can take over. But again, that's going to affect your project costing. So we're not actually going to put that in at the moment. Inexperience of junior developers might cause delays. Okay, so again, it might take our hard a bit longer to develop, write his code or test whatever he's doing. Skill gaps in specific technologies, uh, so we might come across uh, a live financial API that we need to use. Um, maybe Sarah's not used that before, she's not come across it, so she needs to learn how to do that. Uh, maybe it doesn't work, uh, whatever reason, there's going to be some kind of delay. Uh, we've got time scheduling risk, okay, so underestimating task durations. If it takes longer, it's going to impact our time scale, which then impacts our costs. And then financial risk, the project's overruns, uh, exceeds the expected costs and the spirals out of control. Benefits, let's just outline some of the benefits of having this system. So we've got reduced travel and increased efficiency, communication. We've got things like better financial advice, better access to tools for the clients. Data-driven insights for the data analytics module, um, so that'll help run the business. And then we've also got live financial feeds so we can analyze the market in real time. Dependencies and requisites. Dependencies are tasks or components that rely on others to be completed first. So remember earlier I spoke about the database. The database needs to be developed before the information feed can be developed because the information feed relies on data being retrieved from the database. Infrastructure needs to be developed before anything else can happen because we need to have a secure and stable environment on which to develop our software. Unit testing can only begin once the module has been written. I guess we've got code, can't test anything without code. Integration testing only happens after all the modules have been unit tested. Fixing and regression testing can only take place after integration testing has been completed. Modules can only be deployed after development and testing. User acceptance testing requires a working version of the system, so the modules need to be deployed first, and then user training depends on the final UI. So that's going to be carried out as the final task of the project. A prerequisite is a condition that must be met before the project or a specific phase can begin. Okay, so for example, hardware and network infrastructure needs to be available so that the system can be hosted and tested reliably. Okay, so Marius basically needs to do his job first. Access to financial data sources and APIs are required to implement and test the live feed module. So API is uh, some external module or library provided by somebody else. So we need to have access to those. Security policies and compliance guidelines from the client, so RBSX. We need those to do the data handling, storage and encryption, and then branding guidelines and things like that for the UI. We need to explain our choice of server. Why have we chosen to host on the cloud rather than a uh, physical server? So all we basically need to do for that is discuss the pros and cons of cloud servers versus physical servers. So um, basically the cloud is going to be more cost effective, particularly in the long run. Uh, you can talk about scaling. Um, you can talk about uh, it'll be faster to set up and it'll save money. Um, you can talk about having backups and disaster recovery. Okay, so the cloud provider is going to do that for you. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, so that's going to be something that's particularly useful for sensitive financial data. Some of the cons, um, we've got 
RBSX needs to rely on the cloud providers infrastructure. It can take control away over your hardware configurations. You've got to use whatever hardware your cloud provider uses. Access to the system requires reliable internet access. Any outage could impact service availability. Okay, so if your cloud provider goes down, you've got no service. Um, but in the long term, it's more beneficial because it does reduce costs. Right, um, talk about the project time frame. Did you meet the, the time frame of 17 weeks? Yes, we did. Um, current plan demonstrates project, I think it was completed in 106 days actually, so we'll just change that. Um, which is around about 15, 16 weeks. Uh, so this allows some days for contingency plans in case of unforeseen delays that we spoke about earlier. Profit, project costs and profitability, does it make any money? Well, yes, it does. Basically, just talk about how much the project costs, what are the annual running costs, how much profit can um, the RBSX group expect to see in the next three years. Uh, a slight conclusion there. Um, the benefits outweigh the costs. Um, significant financial returns, which outweigh the risk associated with the project. So therefore, carrying out the projects will be a worthwhile investment. So that is the rationale. You basically need to explain all of those things to have a chance of getting the highest marks. And then we just need to save that as a PDF. And that is task one complete.